if this is the situation, you will ask, how did this happen? Now, how did this happen has many aspects to it. One, and perhaps to me the most basic, I would say recurring one, is actually the indifference shown by the central government, by the prime ministers of the day then, about the territory of India. That fact is they simply did not care. And to demonstrate that, I think if one looks at, again, this is there in one of the documents of the uh, released under RTI. This is an observation by the then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru in May of 1961. He says, he writes, I attach no importance at all to this little island and I would have no hesitation in giving up our claim to it. I do not like matters like this pending indefinitely and being raised again and again in Parliament. So, to Pandit Nehru, this was a little island. It had no importance. He saw it as a nuisance. Why are people bringing it up again and again in Parliament? So, for him, the sooner you give it away, the better. Now, you can say, okay, this was Pandit Nehru's view. Now, I want to read to you. Actually, this was not just Pandit Nehru's view. This view continued on to Indira Gandhi ji as well. So, it's very interesting if one goes through the records of Parliament. We are now looking, I'm fast-forwarding it to the time when Kachetivu agreement is done. There is a member of Parliament called G. Vishwanathan from Tamil Nadu. And he says, this is in, I'm quoting from Parliament records. We are worried about Dego Garcia, thousands of miles away from Indian territory. But we are not worried about this small island. When we speak of it, the Prime Minister, he is talking about Indira Gandhi ji. The Prime Minister is said to have remarked in the AICC meeting that this is a little rock. I am reminded of those days when Pandit Nehru called about our northern boundary as a place where not a blade of grass grew. I would like to remind the Prime Minister that after this historic statement by Prime Minister Nehru, uh, Pandit Nehru never regained the confidence of the country. This is going to happen to the Prime Minister when she says this is only a little rock and that there is nothing to worry about the territories of our country. So, as you can see, this is not uh, just, uh, you know, one Prime Minister. Whether it was Pandit Nehru or whether it was Indira Gandhi, this very dismissive attitude this little rock, this island of, no, small island of no importance. This was the historic Congress attitude towards Kachati. Now, again, please don't think it's an individual view. This was actually, in a way, had seeped into the party thinking. So, I will give you another example of it. Same time, uh, there was a, a very well-known Congress leader, all of you are familiar with his name, he was from Delhi, called H.K.L. Bhagat. Hmm? Now, H.K.L. Bhagat is reacting in the same Kachetibur debate. So, he says, and I'm quoting from the parliamentary record, he says, my honorable friend from the DMK was just now talking about Kachetibu, the island. It appears to me that the DMK thinks that probably they can desperately cling to this issue and survive in Tamil Nadu. The Jansang at one time thought they could survive by clinging on to Kutch, but they failed. The DMK is also bound to fail because people of India and the people of Tamil Nadu are mature enough to see that it is in the interests of India, a big and great country, to keep her neighbors, particularly her small neighbors, satisfied. So, Please appreciate today 
how strong, how deep, how pervasive this thinking was. For them sitting in Delhi, this island, this small rock, this island of no importance, this did not matter. It was an inconvenience to be given away so that they, in their minds, could actually get, not just have good relations with the neighbor. They, want, they found it irritating, it was coming up in parliament. For them it was a headache. So they saw the territory of India, and when someone says Jansang also had the same view, yes, there were parties for whom every millimeter of Indian territory mattered. Apparently there were parties to whom even large tracts of Indian territory, as we saw in Aksai Chin, did not matter. Now, so far, so far, I have spoken about what was the approach of the central government and of the Congress party. But, you know, you have to ask yourself, would it have been possible if there was no connivance at the state level? Now, since 1974, we have heard protestations from the state government, then state government, from the DMK. As I pointed out, I get so many letters even now from the chief minister of the DMK. So I want to now turn the focus to the second document of the RTI. This is a document which is a record of a meeting, a record of a meeting on 19 June 1974, which is held in, the, in Fort St. George, the Secretariat Tamil Nadu Secretariat uh, conference room, where the foreign secretary, accompanied by the director of the historical division, he calls on the then chief minister of Tamil Nadu, Kalanyar Karnanidhi, uh, and uh, present there are the Tamil Nadu chief secretary, gentleman called P. Sabanayakam, and the home secretary, uh, a gentleman called S.P. Ambrose. Now, I want to share with you the relevant part of this, because this will now answer the question, not just the question who did it, but the question who hid it also. After the exchange of courtesies, Foreign Secretary, recalling the talks he had in New Delhi with the Chief Minister in October, 13th October, 1973, so please note, we are talking 19 June 74. So talks have been going on between the foreign ministry, union government, and the chief minister from 1973. So recalling 9, 13th October 1973, and with the chief minister, secretary, and other officials of Tamil Nadu in Madras on 14th October 1973, before the Indo-Sri Lanka official level talks in Colombo on 15-16 October 1973. So the key point is, one year before the Kachatibu agreement, already union, then union government and then state government led by DMK were already, the chief minister, up to the level of chief minister, were already discussing this agreement. And they are discussing this agreement before they actually go into talks with Sri Lanka. Now then it says, Foreign Secretary said, the purpose was to keep the Tamil Nadu government fully informed, please note these words, fully informed, of the developments in the talks with Sri Lanka and get the benefit of the views and negotiations of the Tamil Nadu, views and suggestions of the Tamil Nadu authorities. So this is actually the truth. The truth is, for a party which has been saying, how was Kachatibu given away? How was state government not consulted? You know, how could the union government have done this? The fact is that actually there were consultations going on. They were kept fully informed. And please, when you hear the rest of it, you will see that it is much more than this.